1958, a TV show called The Rifleman started airing. It was about the Old West and had a main character who was strong and quiet, using his rifle to solve problems. People really liked it. But did you know there's more to the show than just what you see on screen? There are interesting, surprising, and sometimes sad things about it. So keep an eye out for those. Do you have a special memory of watching The Rifleman? Maybe you watched it with your family on cozy nights or pretended to be characters from the show with your friends. Share your stories below. The TV series The Rifleman, which aired in 1958, had a lasting effect on television. It still matters today. The show stood out for its unique storytelling and its depiction of a single father raising his son in the Old West. With its interesting characters and tough decisions, it grabbed people's attention and became really popular. One reason it still matters is because of its portrayal of strong family values and the bond between a father and his son. The relationship between Lucas McCain and his son Mark really connected with viewers. It showed how important love, guidance, and being tough in tough times are. Also, The Rifleman was groundbreaking in how it showed action scenes, especially the rifle shooting parts. It set a new standard for Western TV shows, its fast-paced stories and memorable characters like the strong but caring Lucas McCain left a big impression on pop culture. Besides, the show's themes of fairness, doing what's right, and making up for mistakes still matter today. It talked about issues like unfairness, wanting too much, and what happens when people are violent. These stories got people thinking, and still do. To sum up, The Rifleman left a big impression because of its good stories, memorable characters, and important themes. It's still important today because it shows timeless family values and talks about tough decisions. The show still interests people and inspires new viewers, making it a part of TV history. The Rifleman, a TV series from 1958, had a few interesting facets worth noting. The actor in the series served as a technical advisor and also appeared in Ethel Barrymore's production of The Corn is Green. Additionally, he played a role in launching the acting career of Johnny Crawford. In terms of appearance, he wore a hairpiece for his role as Oscar Goldman in the Bionic franchise. However, his real hair, which had thinned out significantly, was visible in the case of the paper bullets and runner in the dark. Overall, the Rifleman's involvement in various aspects of entertainment showcases his versatility and impact on the industry. The Rifleman made big changes to TV. Chuck Connors, who played Lucas McCain, first acted in Gunsmoke with James Arnas. They had a famous fight scene that's often studied in film school. Jack Klugman also appeared. Connors also worked with a monkey actor named Jocko in The Twilight Zone and Gilligan's Island. Originally, McCain was supposed to be named John McCain and be good with pistols. But the producer changed it to a story about a dad with a son using a special rifle. These behind-the-scenes details show how The Rifleman evolved and its lasting influence on TV stories. The Rifleman aired in 1958. In 1977-78, when the bionic woman moved to NBC, John Anderson made history by playing the same role on two different networks. Anderson holds the record for the most appearances as a unique character on the show, with 11 appearances, often as a heavy. In the second season, he appeared twice in back-to-back -back episodes, Day of the Hunter and Mail Order Groom. Despite being younger than Chuck Connors in his final role, he portrayed Lucas' father-in-law. John Milford followed closely behind with 10 unique roles. He appeared 11 times, with only two appearances as the same character. Anderson is best known for his role as Uncle Jesse Duke on the Dukes of Hazard. The set used for the interior scenes of the McCain house became recognizable due to its appearance in other Western television shows, including episodes of Wanted Dead or Alive starring Steve McQueen. This particular series broke new ground by being the first to center around a widowed parent, Lucas McCain, who is tasked with raising his child alone after his wife succumbs to smallpox in the Oklahoma Territory. Despite considering remarriage at various points in the storyline, he remained single, focusing on the upbringing of his son. Lucas McCain had three children from his marriage, Alan, Deborah, and David. Later, when Lee, the actor who portrayed McCain, married Joan Miller, they expanded their family by adopting a daughter, Denise. This approach to family dynamics, along with the shared set pieces with other Westerns, contributed to the show's unique place in television history, offering viewers a glimpse into the challenges and triumphs of single parenthood during the era it depicted. The Rifleman, a TV series from 1958, features a notable actor who played Ozzy. 
Whitehead's father and the man who shot Liberty Valance, despite being nine years younger than Whitehead in real life. This actor showcased his versatility by appearing multiple times in Columbo, taking on different roles with one notable episode being Negative Reaction, where he starred alongside Dick Van, his former colleague from the Dick Van Dyke show in the 60s. The actor made his film debut in How Green Was My Valley, set in rural Wales but filmed in Hollywood. Originally hired as a Welsh accent coach for the English, Irish, Scottish, and American cast, he ended up playing the role of a prizefighter in the movie, a decision made by director John Ford due to his genuine Welsh background. These details shed light on the actor's diverse career, showcasing his ability to take on various roles across different genres and mediums. Doc Burridge, a character in the series, was played by different actors over time, even in the same season. When Patricia Blair joined in the fifth season, a special Irish music theme played whenever she appeared on screen. After the show, one of the actors became a spokesperson for the United States Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms in the early 1970s. Having different actors play the role made Doc Burridge's character more interesting. Each actor brought their own unique style to the role. Viewers enjoyed seeing the different ways the character was portrayed, which kept them interested. When Patricia Blair joined, the show's mood changed a bit with the Irish music theme, adding a fun touch. After the show, one of the actors went on to work in a different field, showing his versatility. Doc Burge's character is still remembered from the show, and each actor's portrayal adds to its charm. This analysis shows how the characters in the show were diverse and interesting, making the show special. The lasting impact of The Rifleman speaks to its great storytelling and memorable characters, including Doc Burridge, who continues to fascinate audiences today. This analysis helps us understand the characters in the show better and why they are still loved even now. The Rifleman, a TV series from 1958, featured a lead actor who developed skills like trick roping from Monty Montana and horse wrangling from Buster Tro during its early seasons. After the series ended, the actor continued honing his abilities with coaching from Gene McLaughlin. Despite being a smoker himself, Lucas McCain, played by the lead actor, was only seen smoking once in the show's first episode, The Sharpshooter. Interestingly, the actor smoked a staggering 60 cigarettes daily off-screen. Additionally, he portrayed characters involved with Death Row twice, once in I Want to Live and later in The Green Mile. Lucas McCain, the main character in The Rifleman, moved to New Mexico with his son Mark after his wife Margaret passed away from smallpox. The show, starring McCain, ended after five seasons when McCain and his co-star Johnny Crawford decided to pursue other projects. Despite the series ending, McCain and Crawford remained close friends, bonding over their shared love of baseball. In The Six Million Dollar Man, McCain's character worked for a government department called the OSI. Interestingly, McCain himself created an orientation video for a real government department, also called the OSI, which differed significantly from the fictional portrayal.